All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the SIG architecture meeting for the Kubernetes community. Today is Thursday, December 21st, 2017. I am Jay Singer Dumars, and I am your moderator for today's meeting. Uh, we are approaching this meeting on a informational basis and probably just to get uh, an idea about where some things in progress are at, but uh, we're not gonna try and uh, make this a decision-making effort. So uh, without further ado, um, Saad Ali, you are number one on the agenda to discuss the permanent home for um, Kubernetes CSI. Yeah, so this was uh, an F9 getting container storage interface into Kubernetes. Uh, we made good progress on it and got it out as alpha. A lot of the components required for enabling a external container storage interface driver uh, require sidecar containers that know how to interact with Kubernetes. The idea is that the CSI driver itself can be completely agnostic to Kubernetes and it gets paired with these Kubernetes specific sidecar containers. In addition to that, there are some example volume plugins we wanted folks to have to, to, to play around with uh, and uh, some utilities for text uh, testing and documentation and things like that. Uh, for of development, we created our own repository, uh, github.com slash Kubernetes dash CSI, where we put off this stuff. Uh, a couple of problems with this. One is uh, there's no official CLA on it, uh, which uh, Kubernetes legal is probably not going to be happy whether CNCF legal or whoever. Uh, and uh, second is we have a couple of existing Kubernetes repositories where this stuff should probably go. Uh, github.com slash kubernetes or github.com slash kubernetes dash incubator uh, and we don't have to make the decision in this meeting but uh, the decision that I would like to make is where how should we move forward should we migrate uh, these uh, this the contents of this repository somewhere else uh, or is there a way to have this officially kubernetes blessed and uh, make it okay where it is so, um, so creating organizations and not getting the CLA set up is probably not a great idea. <laughs> um, it, so, you know, is is at the top of the list of the steering committee. I know that uh, it just came up in another context. Uh, uh, really, tiered. <laughs> I'm putting together a, a, a straw man. I love Brendan. And shows up and I immediately like <laughs> name drop him and like throw stuff on his plate. Yeah, that was pretty. Um, I, I, I so felt like just to dial in for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like your ears were burning. No, so the the this is with respect to CSI. Um, some of the CSI stuff has been checked into a new GitHub org called Kubernetes dash CSI without the CLA set up and and uh, you know I I think in terms of like projects like in my mind this is a fairly straightforward extension of the efforts of the of the storage sig whether you know where sub projects like that should be hosted and how we track those is something that we don't have good process around right now and and it really is a pretty critical problem so i don't think anybody necessarily did anything wrong i think it just really highlights the need that we need to get get this stuff figured out um so that's and, that and Joe, this is matt real quick yeah, I feel like maybe we can have like a can on some marked out and then we can hang on. We got a name call check. Um, Matt, go ahead real quick. Well, I, I'm trying to solve the same problem for one of the other orgs that's been set up for a while. And what I've discovered is not only is it not documented, it's kind of hard to track down how we go about doing this. And so in January, when people come back, I was hoping to start tracking some of that down so we can get it documented. Who we need to go to, like to set up the CLA, that is all back channel communications with the CNCF and the Linux Foundation, and it doesn't seem to be documented anywhere. And so it's hard for projects to do this because we don't even have it written down and only a few people know how to do it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'll put that as a to-do in the agenda. Um, Brendan, you were saying something. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what it was. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, I, what I was saying was, I think the only way this is going to work is if we, if we somehow force people to register. 
the, that it is an official Kubernetes project, and then we can have automation that checks for the CLA bots and code of conduct and all that stuff. I feel like a manual process here is just not gonna not gonna scale. I was just gonna say, like, I think I think in a previous, I think two weeks ago, I suggested that we that we use the CLA bot as a we have a list of projects that conform to the CLA bot, and I guess the code of conduct or whatever whatever set of things we want to. Uh, consider is a requirement for Kubernetes project, and by doing that list, we may make it there. There is less pressure to become an official Kubernetes project if instead you have a list of projects that are conforming to the Kubernetes ethos. But in this specific case, I'd say there are two things. One of which is, if there's any code in Kubernetes Kubernetes that you move out, you are immediately allowed to create a Kubernetes slash CSI repo. And the other one of which is like. I think that CNI, by being in a totally separate repo that is not affiliated with Kubernetes in any way, sort of feels like they aren't necessarily only in service of Kubernetes or the Kubernetes customer. And so, so, so there's, here, really uh, there, there's two sets of uh, repositories. One is the container storage interface repository, which is completely independent of Kubernetes. Uh, and the idea there is it hosts the spec uh, for CSI. Uh, which any CO, including Mesos, Docker, and us can implement. The components in this particular repository are components that are only for Kubernetes CSI. So, so a um, quick question, are these specialized to, to specific vendors, or is it like a generic Kubernetes CSI adapter? Uh, it's a generic Kubernetes CSI adapter. There's basically three sidecar containers that are can be used by a storage vendor to deploy their arbitrary CSI driver on Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, that seems like a slam dunk, and I don't know why it needs its own org. I, I think, you know, moving... Well, I think the reason for separate orgs is because GitHub org ackling is, is bad, basically. Yeah, I, no, I hear you, Brendan. I, I think... There's, there, there's two ways out of it. We can have org sprawl or we can build toolability that actually essentially reduces the amount of reliance on the GitHub model and replaces it with bots and stuff, right? And we've moved, been moving further and further down that path. One of the big missing pieces there is just managing membership based on YAML files. And so that's a big, big missing piece there. I'm not sure that doubling down on relying on the GitHub org. Yeah. And I'm channeling Brian a little bit there, um, but but I, but I also think there's more to it than just the org membership. I think one of the other um, one of the other issues is the decentralization of decision making about when you can have a new org, right? Like if we if we put everything in Kubernetes, Kubernetes, or I mean, sorry, everything in the Kubernetes org, then like. We're centralizing decision making about when you can have a new repo, and I'm I'm not sure that's scalable either. Well, no, okay. Um, or well, I, I think we do need to have some process in terms of what code, what projects is Kubernetes as a project signing up to take on, right? And and roughly that's equivalent to repos, and and whether or not that needs to be a a heavy process or a super central. I think there needs to be a process there to actually take So that that's on. fair. I mean, if we believe that this is, and storage, for example, may be so core that we believe that it really is like, it's a Kubernetes level project, not a SIG level project, um, then that's cool. But I think we should make a distinction between effectively like SIG level stuff versus, like, I mean, that's an example. Sod, I know, has it's been prototyping some of the snapshotting stuff, and it's in like a separate repo. And it feels like that doesn't have to, like until that's gonna become part of core, that's a SIG level decision as opposed to a Kubernetes level decision. And I feel like we should distinguish between those. I, I, there's, a, there's I, I, I hear what you're saying, code is code is code. It should, we shouldn't stand in the way of folks writing code. Um, there's, there's, there's other implications there of having something be like an official repo and, and like there's both legal and, and community implications of that that I think we have to think through. But, um, but so, 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 Joe, so just to bring up a quick example yeah, though, I'm sorry to, to jump in here. If we're gonna prototype something and, and we can't create a repo for it, we don't have a, an easy process for that, 
that means we now need an easy process to sign over that code when it somehow gets donated because we've got the legal issue of bringing but it in. I, and so the question I don't think anybody's arguing with the fact that we need we need an easy process there. I think there's a question of like, is it a total rubber stamp or is there some level of eyes on it? I think everything that comes in, and this is practical that I just ran into, is like with the virtual cubelet, I, I, I can't have code come in that's not CLA effectively. And so like right now it's under the Microsoft CLA um, because I have to have some CLA. And, and so then I'm going to have to basically like re-CLA it and, and, and it also is off-putting, right? If someone's coming and thinking they're contributing in general to Kubernetes, but it's the Microsoft CLA. Like, I think that there are barriers that having to start totally out in the wilderness put up that are perhaps a So, okay. Um, so two things to unpack. So, so, so number one is, is the CLA requirement is not a CNCF requirement. That's a Kubernetes thing. The CNCF is okay with DCO uh, uh, repositories. I think that's something close to the loop I asked. Uh, personally, like the like like starting an, an open source project with a CLA outside of the CNCF is a difficult thing to actually get right, and it's going to definitely uh, uh, it's going to definitely be a drag on contributions. Like when we started doing the authenticator stuff with AWS, the relationship of the CLA versus versus um, um, doing a DCO pro, uh, type of process. Uh, if we'd been a CLA, it would have been a much more difficult thing to actually get lined up. Um, then the second thing, Matt, I, I totally agree. We need to have an easy process. I think it's just a matter of, is it a total rubber stamp or is it like, hey, this is just clearly outside the scope of stuff that Kubernetes should be doing. Uh, one more thing I wanted to add on the org, org versus repo discussion. Uh, we have multiple components and ideally we'd like to leave each individual component in a separate repo so that we can cut branches and do releases for that particular sub feature instead of having one Mondo like CSI repo that we have to stuff everything in which makes cutting releases much more challenging. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's, that's, we should make it so that it's easy enough to create repos for smaller components. We had this discussion in CLI yesterday. Um, about as we start taking like utility libraries and pack packages, do we actually put those in the cube control repo? Do we put them in like say client go or something? Do we do staging stuff? Do we create lots of small repos or one big sort of kitchen sink repo? So these 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 problems aren't unique to to this particular case. Yeah, I'll just to be the devil's advocate. I do remember a time when like the version two of different things that you could have deployed in your cluster with Heapster or Cube DNS and everything else was really bad actually, right? And so there is some degree in which having alignment and versioning is actually not a terrible idea. But that, I mean, that's gotta be separate than actually the, the repo or the organization will break down, or the org break. Oh, no. oh, I totally agree with that. I just meant that like, I just saw the point about like lots of independent releases. It's like, I, I totally get that, but I also wanna push back a little bit architecturally because I think it's hard. Well, I mean, we should have that discussion with Brian in the room too, because Brian has very definite opinions about like, like this, you know, this this constellation of, of, of binaries and there is no there is no one release yeah but then that means there's no one support either i mean i don't know anyway yeah, yeah. so so Saad, so Saad, i think getting the cla turned on yesterday is probably a high priority there beyond that you know in terms of like wanting a place to land this and so i think this is definitely uh it for yet more fuel for, for the argument that we need to actually get this shit figured out sooner rather than Okay, later. so and, and, I'll take an action item to uh, go ahead and figure out how to get the CLA turned on. Who would be the best person to get in touch with to help me with that? Uh, I can help you and Chris and Isaac from CNC if we can help you both. Perfect, okay, I'll send an email, email to Ihor and Chris and uh, we'll get the ball rolling on yeah. that. Yeah. And, then, and then the other thing, I, and I, I don't think with you. What's that? I have a request of you and the uh, the rest of the steering committee. Can we kind of prioritize this? We've probably got a dozen orgs already set up that uh, are listed as being in. There's an issue on the community repo to try and track it, which is poor. But I think there's there's probably it's like ten or a dozen different orgs now, and we're starting to see the sprawl. And so if we're going to go in a different direction than from that, it's going to be a lot harder to back out of it in three four months than it is in a month or so. 
Yeah, we'll we'll get on it. I, I as I said, I took the action to go and propose something. Um, I have opinions, but we need to get enough people in the steering committee to agree. And so far, the right way to do that has been to propose things and force people to object, as opposed to try and build consensus in the group. So I'll I'll, just, I'll take a lead on that. So I have opinions here also, but I also think getting this stuff figured out trumps any specific opinions I have because it's it's definitely at a critical level. So I, I hear you there. And also suggest looking at what OpenStack did back in the day because they figured out how to give people the freedom to, to um, develop on kind of incubator-like things that may or may not. And they, they were able to figure out that differentiation and yet give people the ability to start new things. So I, I, I think... That's an interesting data point in both directions. Yeah, and they, they had things that uh, they incubated and then later, because they didn't go anywhere, they archived. And so they figured out how to do that and say, okay, this didn't go anywhere, it died, and we archived it. And they figured out how to do that. Yeah, I, I am, I'm a big proponent of making incubator easier, but having heard that and having lived through the open experience where there's a project for everything. I, I am <laughs> I, I think I think some of this in, in my mind is just it comes down to a shared understanding of what Kubernetes is and what it isn't and 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 finding ways to control that drift over time uh, so that it does not become everything to everybody. Um, and that, that's my that's my worry here. Yeah, and we should be careful the difference between a high control and low accountability versus a high accountability, low control. Um, maybe set guidelines and then hold people accountable, but that high control will create a bottleneck. And just think about the implications of that. No, I, I totally hear you. Well, I guess I, I, would, I would really agree with Joe here. And I feel like we built this project so that this stuff shouldn't matter. Right, like you, there is, there there should be at this point literally nothing that you that being in the Kubernetes org is good for, except for like PR, and PR is probably a bad reason to be in an org. Um, and so, like, I, I really would like to push back, and, and I don't mind high control. I don't mind bottlenecking at some level. I, I don't want to bottleneck people's development, right? Like, I, I really want people to be able to move forward, but I don't want people to want to join the org just so they get some stamp of approval. But I mean, but that be you said, Brandon, I mean, you look at the, the CSI oh, adapter stuff that yeah, Todd's yeah, yeah. talking about. Yeah, that's, really. that's a different yeah, thing. Absolutely. Yeah. No, and I think there are things where we should definitely do that. But I, I, and, I, and this is why I've always pushed for a differentiation between effectively like internal SIG sponsored projects versus external, I built this thingy project, right? Like if it's coming up organically from inside a SIG, well, then clearly it's like it's closer to the core anyway, just because the SIG is doing it. Rather than like some, you know, some external questions. I, I don't think the so, is so, quite as bright, but we got to get this shit figured out. I, I, I'd like to bring up one use case we haven't talked about. There are a number of companies who want to contribute things, and they can just freely contribute to Kubernetes. But if it's not part of the Kubernetes org, now they have to jump through all kinds of legal hoops, which stop them. That is currently a case today for a number of is that, companies. That's okay. And, is that true? I'm talking. Is that true? Everything's under CNCF CLA. I mean, I would feel like the CNCF. So actually, we but if you're if not part of Kubernetes, like it's just one of those things where the Kubernetes org doesn't matter, then you know we say, well, it doesn't matter. You don't want to be in. Just go do it somewhere else. They're not allowed to go do it somewhere else. Yeah, we we had this issue with the CSI spec. The CSI spec was a collaboration between folks from Kubernetes, Mesos, Docker, and Cloud Foundry. We went out, created a GitHub repo, and just started collaborating there. We technically are not under the CNCF CLA because the project has not yet been uh, become part of the CNCF. Um, so we're kind of floating around without a CLA right now, and uh, we're figuring that out internally within that group. But that kind of issue where you have projects that are uh, being incubated, not yet part of CNCF, uh, not part of Kubernetes, uh, they need some sort of legal protection. If there's a process for that, that would be awesome. So, so maybe so that's, just, that's an action item is to get the CNCF to be willing to apply its CLA to anything, right? I don't see a problem yes. with that. Yeah, I mean, so the, yeah, this is there's discussions actively ongoing with the CNCF to essentially 
I, I hesitate to call it incubator because there's this assumption that things can graduate, but essentially some sort of, of sandbox where, where people can create and have you know, projects that are legally owned by the CNC, yet there is no sort of marketing stink on it. So it's just a way for them to get those legal protections without necessarily getting the lift. So at CNC, in all that sexual, like the sandbox for, for the projects. Uh, but again, there is some barrier how, how your project can be added to CNCF as an official project, even to. So if you're looking for some abilities, how this project can be, like it shouldn't be an official CNCF project, right? But should be protected by CNCF. Do you understand correctly, dude? So, so here's a question though, too, and, and I don't want to have the answer now, but um, one of the things that can give you some of these productions is a DCO, which the CNCF solves. And is our problem that if it wants to come into Kubernetes, then you have to do the translation from a DCO to a CLA. But if we did DCOs and we could just accept the DCO when something comes in, would that solve a lot of the issues? Well, I want to know why does it need to come in? Well, because again, to my Eddie original concern, the there's some companies that, that yeah, well, some of it, there are some companies where they can't go do the work unless it's part of Kubernetes. They are not allowed to go contribute, right? So we will stop certain contributions where they have to keep it internal um, because they're not allowed or they have to go through lots and lots of legal loopholes to jump through to go do this or they have to kind of avoid their lawyers and hope they don't get I, 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 I mean, I mean, legalistically at the org level i'm mean, just trying to understand is it the org level i mean like at the github org level um it's whatever is considered part of the project itself and so if they've got to go create my new spiffy thing org to get a bunch of people collaborating around it uh because it's not part of and they can't use kubernetes in the name because we own the right and we say no you can't do that then it's like oh i can't contribute to that because it's not part of kubernetes and now i've got to go get uh permission to contribute to something new or to work on it and release something new and that's a lot of legal loopholes and that has been a complaint that has come up more than once on this issue and why people want to be able to just have a playground in Kubernetes to go work on these things because they can contribute carte blanche to Kubernetes, but if it's not part of Kubernetes uh, organizationally, then they can't and that's a huge barrier. And this is one of the big blocking points that makes people want to contribute more to Kubernetes and make it an official part than to do it elsewhere. This is one of the yeah. big things. I mean, I totally see where you're coming from, but I also feel like we shouldn't refactor ourselves entirely to match up with enterprise orgs that haven't quite gotten onto open source, right? And I speak that, I mean, I say that from a company that's still- going I think it's a trade-off. Right? Like, I mean, we got to weigh these things against each other. I just agree with Brian. Exactly, exactly. Like, I, I'm not saying like we should slam the door, but I think that we should understand like, if we get to a place where we say it's all under one CLA, is that good enough? And can you then take that back to a company and say like, hey, the contribution agreement's the same. Can we get a, a can we get a sign off at the contribution agreement level as, as opposed to the, uh, you know, the org, the GitHub org level. Um. Ah, so, so here, maybe here's the question though, is if they were going to go put it somewhere, so it could be worked on outside of Kubernetes, if they're not allowed to go do that, where would they go do it to get people to collaborate with them? That's, that ends up being the blocker. They can't well, go I do guess it. I was, so wondering, I was right. wondering, like if you, if you created an org that was covered by the CNCF DLA, but was not part of Kubernetes, would that be sufficient for, uh, for the enterprise company to accept that you go contribute there? That's what I would ask, right? That's what I would try and push for. And, and it's also not our job to create a safe space for the world, you know, under the Kubernetes umbrella. Like, yeah, that's like it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at some point, there are things that Kubernetes is not, and and using the fact that we can put a Kubernetes name on it as a backdoor to get around backwards corporate policies seems backwards to me. Now, so I, I'm just actually channeling other people's issues, not my own, just to highlight the thing that is that causes a lot of heartburn here and the reason we do things the way we do. This is actually not so much an issue that I have. I'm just channeling others. So that way, when you talk to it, realize there's some other yeah. big players so, who have this should, issue and this is why. We should absolutely keep it in mind. I think as, as we've said, and we'll just in the discussion there, like it's a, there's trade-offs and we need to find some place in the middle that we think optimizes for both. I feel like there's a there's an action item here, which is we should make it very 
very easy for any project anywhere in the world to use the Kubernetes. If they're not in, affiliated in any way with the Kubernetes. I mean, the CNCF. Yeah. Sorry, well, the CNCF, yeah. CNCFCOA, and it can be right. more complicated. And then maybe so some of the backwards corps will then say, oh, well, CNCFCLA is what we care about. And maybe, maybe it, will, it will definitely make it easier to decide to move to. It will definitely make it easier. So it feels like we can then have a, a list of all those projects, which might lend some, might take away some of the pressure from those being part of the Kubernetes org. It feels like it, it's a no-lose. And I don't so, think it's actually that hard. I think that's actually the bot. So the question in my mind, Justin, and I think this is a question for the CNCF lawyers, is are there responsibilities for owning ownership for random code? So if somebody goes through and takes something that's patented or copyrighted, puts it under a CNCF CLA license, does that create headaches for, for the lawyers, right? Um, you know, uh, you know it, it, it's not as simple as being like, let's put a stamp on it. I think there might be other implications. And so there might be some level of, somebody has to look at it and say, yeah, that's not insane. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree with uh with checking with the lawyers and but i mean obviously it would be weird if i could say something with cncf cla and that would create a problem for the cncf right or just some random person so, right so, uh, would it be possible how hard is it to switch from a dco to the cncf cla very hard is that something Depending on how many contributors there are to the project and the reason i ask is because the cncf allows for a dco it's kubernetes that requires the cla it's it's even Google projects that require CLA. So for gRPC yeah, ones, okay. so ex-Google projects require us require CLA. That's why we switched. They really don't have to. I mean, like as, as the steering committee for for Kubernetes could say we're okay with DCO sub projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that that was like the initial decision when Kubernetes as a CNCF project was okay. formed. Yeah. Okay. Is there a way to information for updating? You know, we can take this offline probably because we're, we're rambling on now, but to to make the bot more automated so we can do some of this more automation that Brendan talked about with auditing and maybe some of these additional projects. But I can ping you offline about that. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and step in here and uh, we, we, need to, we need to move on. Um, Cause- uh, Yeah, uh, just, 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 just the final note from me. So if, if you have- any questions regarding CNCF and legal stuff regarding everything that we've been discussing during the last half an hour, please uh, create a mailing thread, uh, CC me and Chris, and we'll forward that to, to the right direction. I, even if you have some legal question, we'll forward it to Linux Foundation lawyers. That's Thank all. You, Thank you. Uh, I added you as a to-do item to uh, look into whether the CNCF CLA could be applied to uh, a broader suite of things without necessarily having to be under the auspices of uh, CNCF. So um, l let us know maybe in a week or two how that conversation goes. Thank you. Um, Joe Vita, you have uh, some updates on the KEP stuff and the, the status uh, area there. Can you let us know what's going on there? Yeah, so two things there. So I moved um, the kept template and instructions into a top level folder in the community repo. I put a warning on there saying that process is still alpha just so that people don't jump the gun too much. But that's an effort to make the stuff more discoverable. The next step there in my mind is, is to start getting something that can actually act on and use that metadata to do interesting things because value of kept gonna be some standard metadata for being able to actually understand where things are. Um, and so that led down, you know, based on the last SIG architecture meeting, a rabbit hole of like, well, do we need a, like a site or do we have like a more, you know, community site that brings in a bunch of other stuff? So I started a thread with SIG architecture, ContribX, and SIG docs saying like, hey, what should we do for a site that's community oriented that can include the caps, but also maybe other contributor guides so that we move from a sort of pile of markdown files spread across like a gazillion repos to something that's more accessible and, and really targeted towards users. Along with that, um, I, I think that, that uh, my ideal for what this thing would be, be like, and this is something that I've been talking to, 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 to some of the, the members of ContribX 
you know, individually about is I'd love to get to the point where it's like the contributor homepage where it's like, I go to a place and it's like, here's where the next like release is. Here's where, you know, we are with respect to merging, you know, here's like, we're working on this branch on docs, you know, that type of stuff that is like, you know, Hey, I'm a contributor. Where do I start my day in terms of looking at stuff that brings together all that stuff, including caps. Um, that's what I'd love to see that turn into. So I naively started a mailing thread saying, hey, what do I got to do to get a site up? And uh, it snowballed a little bit. We had a meeting yesterday and uh, the, the recording was sent out to, to the SIG architecture mailing list. The, the upshot there is that um, there is a certain amount of like, hey, let's put this all in the main Kubernetes.io site. My pushback on that was, was we really need to have a place um, uh, that is more, more of that dashboard versus an information architecture document site and some some more innovative things like provide ways to slice and dice and sort and, and arrange apps and stuff like that to use that metadata uh pull together code you know documents from a bunch of different repos integrate those and then publish those as one thing to kubernetes.io that, that process doesn't exist yet and so uh where we ended up is provisionally you know, Paris said, hey, this sounds reasonable, but hasn't actually talked to everybody in ContribX, but provisionally ContribX would, would the owner for the contributor facing site. Uh, and that site would, uh, uh, we would decide the tool chain to use for that, knowing that, you know, there's a trade off between um, doing the same things that the docs folks are uh, versus stuff that may be more familiar to the development audience. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, but we'll probably end up creating like a community.kubernetes.io or a contributors.kubernetes.io or like other names suggested. We can bike shit on that. But creating a site that really becomes that, that portal, that homepage for contributors. Um, so that's kind of where we're at there. But my goal here is to get to a point where we can publish caps in a way that makes them really discoverable, readable, and cross-referenced. Comments, thoughts? Am I crazy? I, I love the idea of a contributor landing page that, and then, you know, tie in all the great contributor tools like uh, kate.reviews and stuff into that. That would be. <laughs> we have so many dashboards and like, I there's know. no canonical list of where do I go for this dashboard. And I'm, I'm always discovering them because it's like, wow, I didn't even know we had that thing. <laughs> yeah, I 100% agree. Thank you so much, by the way, for organizing uh, that because that's super cool. Well, it's not done yet. So, you know, I got the ball rolling. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see where we go. Um, names for that thing. I mean, what do you think? Community? I mean, like community is bigger than just the folks that are contributors. Contrib, contributors actually, you know, has this connotation of like shit that nobody wants to own. Um, what is the right term for this sort of project facing portal versus, you know, user facing portal? Yes. No. I'm trying to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> what do you think, Yor? Yeah, I'd, li I'd like to see it as a user. Looping back to our yesterday conversation about actually the same idea that we had for CNC of contributors. So I'd like to see that the user facing portal for first of Kubernetes for potential contributors and for existing contributors. No, no, like some high high level ended data. So, okay, yeah, I think some of it is name that we pick here will help frame it for people, and so I'm not really quite sure what the right name is for it. So, I don't know, Jace, you said you're trying to keep your mouth shut. Don't, man. What do you think? Oh, I I still think as much as it's kind of an overloaded term, contrib is like sort of the way to go. Um, just because people understand it, they they understand the spirit of what it's trying to get at. It may not be exactly the right taxonomy, but I think it's close. Yeah, definitely don't have or something because that, that's not what we're, what we're about. All right. Nobody else seems to care, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm actually starting to be curious of what do others do for this? Um, 
So I was looking around on that. Yeah. So like, I, I think I looked at like, if I look at like, cause like the, 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 the cat process is in somewhat inspired by, by uh, the Python pep process. Python has a thing called dev guide. I'll put it in here, um, which is really about, you know, how do you actually develop and work on, on, on Python? It's more along like developer focus versus like altogether community contributions. Um, I think, you know, uh, Caleb was definitely inspired by the Rust world. Um, there's, I'm not sure, like, I think they do a lot of stuff that is really based on, on GitHub uh, PRs and stuff. And so that's one of those places where, like, I think, like, we, we've, we've kind of outgrown that. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure that'd be either. Uh, yeah. They set up the domain devguide.python.org. To do at Python, that. yeah. Um, and Rust also is very much developer focused in a way that, that, you know, obviously Kubernetes is not because Kubernetes actually covers a whole range beyond just developers, um, including sort of operators and non-programmers and such. Uh, so I don't know, I'm looking for good templates here in terms of other projects of how they actually deal that duality of users versus developers. Um, Linux is obviously like, I don't know, like random ass text files checked into, into Git along with, you know, mailing lists that you subscribe to at your own peril. I'm just trying to think, are there any other sort of wide community projects that have, like how does Apache work? I don't know. Like, look at that, I hadn't looked yet. Uh, doesn't uh, yeah. <laughs> Jira exactly right. It's like Apache has community.apache.org. Is that it? It might be worth just calling it community or contribute.kas.io and build it with um, people contributing to Kubernetes itself in mind. Yeah, just real. I mean, like at some point the name becomes a token after people really wrap their heads around just it. Pick one and go, something like that. So this is interesting. So Apache has this page across the entire Apache, which is apache.org slash dev, which is Apache's developers and contributors overview. This covers a lot of the sort of process, sort of like legal easy type of stuff that's going on there. But it seems like a lot of these things start with sort of a dev focus and then like the, the contributor sort of like stuff is a little bit of an afterthought. Um, all right, Saad, see you later. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, but it definitely the, the community, it's called community.apache.org is, is definitely, I think probably maybe the, the closest thing, so. Yeah, the resources uh, guide from OpenStack, I also put a link into chat. It's docopenstack.org contributors, and I'm not sure that it's it's the best way for us. So I don't want to include the contributor documentation into, contribute information into Kubernetes documentation because it's way different. Well, I think the quality bar and the requirements there are gonna be very different. Like we really like, yeah like the, 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 the developer facing or the, the contributor facing portal is gonna be, what I even I said developer facing, the contributor facing portal has gotta be, um, you know, up to date and, and sort of relevant is gonna be more important than being pretty or grammar or. And, and I would argue that one of the things that the documentation folks have been targeting at, which is to break things down by different personas or different roles to look at who's doing what to make it very clear, I'm in this role and here's the documentation for me. And if you're consuming Kubernetes, it's a radically different role from somebody who is developing it and the, the content you need. And so making that distinction very clear, no matter how we do it would be important. 
Yeah, and I think you know this is something that um, that Jennifer demoed during that meeting, which is a sort of like the way that they're thinking about guiding people to the correct set of documentation based on their persona, where it's like I am a X looking to do Y, right type of thing, and that actually brings them to the right place. I think that's good for sort of inducting people into this world um, for new contributors and leading them down the right path so that it becomes a sort of a soft entrance. Um, I think there's a different, you know, like, hey, I, you know, I'm in the thick of it. I need to bookmark something. What is the thing that I just like reflexively type when I want to know what the hell's going on with Kubernetes well, from a developer point of view? And I think that there's real world concerns here that are going to be solved by having something like this. For example, all the churn around uh, what documents are required for uh, or what's required to do the release, you know, so the document deadline is in 10 days, the code freeze is in seven days or, you know, some, some kind of interactive things like that would be tremendously valuable to the community. I mean, that sort of contributor level uh, single pane dashboard would be amazing. Well, and we do this stuff with like announcements at the community meeting, right? But like, <laughs> those are sort of like point in time and then they show up in the notes and maybe they show up in an email, um, you know, getting it's, that stuff to the, yeah. So inverting that a little bit, I think. So that's the goal there. So that's what I'm going to try and get, you know, work with, uh, you know, or at least kick that off and, and get some of that moving in the right place. Yeah, right there. I definitely want to continue being. know what you all think as it goes, as it goes forward. I definitely want to continue being a part of that. I couldn't make the meeting yesterday because I was not available, but uh, to, uh, in the future, please include me on that because I definitely have a passion around that. All right, awesome. Yeah, and sorry, it was kind of like, I'm just like, hey, I just quick email, let me get a website up. And then it like kind of snowballed into like, let's have a meeting. I'm like, all right, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> so is, is there a website? Set up, Joe. Sorry. No. So the, the idea is that that what we right what, what we accomplish is that like we can do a website. We have decided that it's not insane to have that website not be part of Kubernetes.io, and that provisionally ContribX is going to be the one sort of owning that thing long term because everything. Else. And my gut is that we want to turn Kubernetes slash contributor that GitHub repo into the thing that compiles into that website, and so we just build on that. I'm definitely in favor of starting and <laughs> yeah, I mean, put all right. At least we uh, uh, something that we can actually sort of. We don't have a shortage of people that want to contribute and do things like that. So build it and they will open it and they will come. And I think it's hilarious because you, you look at these open source projects that are more sort of front end or oriented. And they have these like websites, like that's what those folks do, right? <laughs> and meanwhile, like, you know, Kubernetes has sort of, you know, mediocre internal infrastructure because like we all know how hard it is to run. And they have a, a command line driven uh, website. Exactly. <laughs> all Adieu. right. Adieu. Do you know if uh, Jennifer, so yesterday Jennifer showed up uh, the demo of uh, the portal. Do you know if that link, that URL is publicly available or that was like her self-deployment? I think that was her, she, she said that she had a, a branch slash PR that, that um, was not good. She was just playing with sort of prototyping some of this stuff. I mean, feel free to reach out to her and actually see, mm -hmm. see what's okay. uh, okay. going there. But, uh, I, I'm not sure where that work in progress is and how much of that is on a branch, how much of it is for personal stuff versus... versus get it, stuff. get yeah. it. Because the demo was amazing and it would be great if we we had an ability to show it today at this, this meeting, but anyway, yeah, well, later. And, and I mean, and if, if we can actually get this sort of, you know, community portal stuff up and running and establish that as a pattern, then that's the type of thing where it would be great to have an index page at the CNCF saying like, hey, if you want to get involved in any of these projects, here's their community portal. Here's the way to actually get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's exactly what we are going to do. And I can expect that Kubernetes project can be a Guinea peak for entire project, for entire initiative for CNCF projects. So let's start with Kubernetes and do it, do it successfully. Awesome. All right, that's all I got. And Brendan disappeared on us, man. He decided we weren't worth it. <laughs> Uh, anybody have anything else or are we just all going to adjourn? 
Um, oh, no, know. you're still there, Brennan. Look at that. You're back. <laughs> yeah, when you, what was the question? I just hopped in an elevator. No, I just said Brendan dropped on us. We're not interesting <laughs> enough for him. <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, I was uh, saying that if there's anything else, uh, we can, uh, I guess we can wrap up if there's nothing else. So, um, have a good holiday, everyone. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Have a great break. All right, everybody. Take care. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye, everyone.